It is the Philistine Goliath who is challenging the armies of Saul as they are on the battlefield in the Valley of Elah. And he is taunting Israel. He is taunting Israel and asking the question, is there a warrior that would serve their God and come out here and battle me? The Bible tells us that they have been doing this for 30 days straight. And that evidently there was nobody in Israel that was prepared to stand up and represent God in a battle against Goliath. We know from history that he was a, a big man. He was tall. Some say seven, eight feet tall. As a matter of fact, he had an armor bearer that was carrying his sword because his sword was so big. And, and he was out there looking at them, knowing full well that there was nobody in their right mind that was going to go into battle with him. Yeah. It was a bit of a stalemate, but eventually something was going to have to happen. Yeah. But in the midst of all this, the three eldest sons of Jesse, the father of David, had gone off to serve in the military. And while going off to serve in the military, Jesse wanted to find out how his sons were faring. So he called on his youngest boy, the one that was keeping the sheep by the name of David, and said, David, I want you to go down and check on your brothers. And while you're doing that, I want you to take these provisions down. Now, give something to the captain of the thousands. Make sure they look after my boys. Take care of my little bride. It was a bride. It was really it was a bride. It was a bride. Now, take care of my sons. Make sure that they are okay. And you come back and send some tokens from me. I, what he was really saying is, I want to know my boys are alive. Yeah. Right. I want to make sure my boys are okay. Yeah. And so David, a precocious 13-year-old, heads down to uh, the battle scene. And I can imagine, as is any other teenage boy, when you see a battle, if you've ever been to a middle school or high school and a fight breaks out, all the young folk, instead of running away, are running in trying to see what was going on. And David's seeing a battle scene, and he's hearing Goliath taunt Israel and challenge them, and not just taunt Israel, but really is calling out their God at the same time. I can imagine he's saying to yourself, if you're big and bad enough and your God is all that, how come you haven't come down here to battle with me? Why haven't you come into this place to, to challenge me? Why come you haven't said, if your God is all that, then why don't you show yourself and stop standing there on the sideline looking like deer when they see some lights? Come on now and battle me. David's looking at all this. And, and begins to ask some questions like, well, well who's going to handle this? And who's going to take care of this? And what happens if somebody goes down there to, to challenge? And they said, look, the king said, if, if somebody would go battle for life, that he would give his daughter in marriage to that person. And then he would also make sure that their family would be free. Now, the story continues. His eldest brother, Eliab, is right there to listen. Uh -huh. yeah. He's curious and, 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 you know, listening to what his brother was saying. And his brother basically turned to him and said, mind your business. Mm. If I can paraphrase, I'm not going to use the best. I just want to paraphrase. He was, he was like, you, you, shut up. Yeah. <laughs> Be quiet. Yeah. You are down here causing trouble. You are here to cause trouble. Yeah. And David turns to him and says, what do I do? If you have younger siblings that you have had to on occasion challenge, you're like, they're like, what did I say? It wasn't my fault. I didn't do it. And then David, after his brother sisters to him, asked the question again and totally ignores his brother at this point. And he says, hmm, I think I can battle with you. And so everybody's looking around, I can imagine, I'm just using my holy imagination here, Bishop. I'm, I'm sure everybody's like, if this kid is going to go battle with Goliath, hey, if he wants to do it, all power to him. And so they take him over to Saul, and he goes to Saul, and Saul, I'm thinking, is looking at him. He's the king of Israel, looking at this boy who was probably still a little dirty from hanging out with the sheep and probably had to fully cleaned up. He didn't take a shower, that's what I'm saying. He hasn't got this stuff all together. He's looking at this boy, and this boy is saying, I'm going to take him out. Yeah. And Saul is looking at him, and then David has to begin to lay 
down his credentials. He's like, look, I've taken on lions and bears while protecting the sheep. I can handle this. And Saul looks and probably thinks to himself, if he wants to kill himself, that's entirely up to him. But I'm not going to let him go out there just the way he is. So, so come here and put on uh, my, my armor. Take my sword and get ready to go. Now, now, now he's trying to outfit him and get him straight so he can get out there to go about the life. The problem was, was that Saul was a tall man. He wasn't a tall Goliath, but he was a tall man. And David was still a boy. So David put on the armor. I can imagine for a moment that David is trying to walk with this armor that weighed him down. And he's tripping and falling all over the place. And everybody's looking and saying, maybe Saul gave him the armor because he didn't want him to go out. And he was trying to let him know he wasn't mad enough to handle the job. And he wasn't quite ready and prepared to serve God in this way. But nevertheless, David persisted. And so he took off Saul's armor and struck down Saul's sword, and he went out on the battlefield to face the Philistine main Goliath. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now he gets out to the field, mm-hmm. and he's facing Goliath. Yeah. And Goliath, I'm sure, chuckling to himself. They sent a boy to do a man's job. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And he begins to challenge David. And Goliath says, you all must think I'm a dog. Because you're trying to send a stick out here to chastise me. And he begins to tell David everything that he wants to do to David, and how he's going to kill David. But David is not dissuaded. He is not turned away. And David begins to say to him, I am here in the name of the living God. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to not only kill you, yeah. but I'm going to cut your head off. Uh-huh. And I'm going to show it off all around town. Yeah. I'm paraphrasing it again, but that's, I can imagine from that. How many of you are Game of Thrones fans in here? Right. You watch Game of Thrones. If you've been to a whole bunch of gory situations like that, but here in this situation, in this moment, this is a Game of Thrones moment. It's like, who's going to get the throne? Is it going to be David or is it going to be Goliath? Everybody's betting against David. They're like, nice try. But they're looking at Goliath saying, that's who we should be sitting on the throne. But in the midst of all this, he's looking at him. And Goliath is fully arrayed in his battle armament. He's got his sword bearer standing right there, his shield bearer standing right there, holding his instruments that are probably bigger than the height that David is. Yeah. And yet, David begins to walk up closer and closer to him. And I can imagine that, that as he's getting closer, he might even begin to pick up some speed. The Bible says that he reached down into the wadi and picked up five smooth stones, pulled out a slingshot. Yeah. I'm sure Goliath's thinking, oh, now he's going to hit me with a pebble. And it's going make a difference. But somewhere along the line as David is running along the way, as he begins to pick up more speed and he's beginning to split that slingshot, he put that little skipping stone inside the slingshot and eventually as he gets close to Goliath, I imagine that with Holy Ghost power pushing him, he jumps in the air and he releases the slingshot and that pebble goes with the power of God and sinks into the forehead of Goliath and Goliath drops dead. David has victory. Israel has victory. But more importantly, God has victory.